Hi, YouTubers and watch shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, hang on. Yeah, that's good. I have got uh, Trader Joe's maple coffee this morning. I'm down to my last little bit, but boy, um, 30 degrees this morning, winter came back, and this was just a perfect, perfect choice. Uh, just filled the room with this wonderful maple scent, and it still lingers in my mug right now. And speaking of mug, this is my um, Java series mug from Global Shave Clubs International. And the reason why I'm using that is because uh, they've got a couple of products in the pipeline that might be of interest to you. So I'm gonna talk about that because it's related to some of the questions that I got this morning. So uh, let's get right to it. Before I get to those questions though, I had an interesting exchange with a viewer from Argentina. That's what's so amazing about uh, uh, YouTube and the internet. I have these great discussions with people and viewers all over the world. It's amazing. Uh, a lot of people around the world doing the wet shave, doing the traditional wet shave. Just amazing. Anyhow, uh, this gentleman's name is Imelkode. That's how I'm assuming it's pronounced. E-M-A-L-C-O-D-E, Imelkode. Now, if I'm incorrect, I apologize. That's how I think it's being pronounced. Anyhow, he happened to write, fun fact, we have wild country shaving cream in Argentina priced at about two US dollars. Now, we had this exchange going back and forth and he mentioned that and I thought, wow, that's really neat because I absolutely love the wild country aftershave balm and the uh, wild country aftershave splash by Avon. And we talked about this and he was saying that, uh, a wild country aftershave, splash, cologne type thing is uh, available uh, in uh, South America and throughout Mexico and Spanish speaking markets. And I thought that was really, really surprising. Uh, and uh, he said, yeah, he, th he thinks it's even available in Mexico. And I checked the package of this. You can see right here, this is, this was a brand new bottle that I bought from Avon.com. Right here, this is a brand new bottle that I bought. It was available only for a limited time, right here, Wild Country. And sure enough, on the back of the box, it says, made in Mexico. I don't know if you can see that or not. Made in Mexico, so, wow. So maybe it's more, more uh, available in Mexico and some of, uh, in South America and some Spanish speaking markets than, in here, than it is here in the US. It'd be interesting to know that. So I only mention that because if you're traveling in those areas of the world and you like this, you know, to check it out. It might be available in some uh, distributors, stores, that sort of thing. Um, you know, maybe Avon reps down there are distributing it or maybe it's available in drugstores or, other nice department stores in, in, in that part of the world. Uh, also, uh, Avon Wild Country Aftershave Balm, they are having a sale on this right now on their website. This is regularly $4 a tube, it's $1.99 if you buy through an Avon rep, your local Avon rep, and you can find a local Avon rep right through their website. So if you're interested, it's a $1.99 tube on sale. So uh, buying through an Avon rep. So I thought I'd mention that because I love this stuff a lot and I like this a lot. And again, it's not available, but if you're in that part of the world, it might be available is what I'm saying. And I'll also link to that uh, video review where Mel Code and I had our exchange. So if you scroll down, you can read all the details there. Okay, let's get to some of these questions here. Uh, NYC Wet Shaving left a comment in my Shaving Brush Showdown video review and he wrote, in my humble opinion, bore brushes are far more superior than synthetic. Well, I, I don't have any argument there. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of wet shavers absolutely love bore brushes. As a matter of fact, there's an Italian barber in Milan who agrees with you. I'll link to that video. This Italian barber in Milan, Italy, says that he thinks the boar brush is a superior brush. He loves the boar brush. And uh, you can see the video. He's speaking in Italian and there are subtitles there. 
translating it into English. And uh, he makes a very good case for the, uh, for the boar brush uh, for the traditional wet shave. Um, my point is, is that synthetic brushes are very, very affordable, and they come in such a variety of sizes, like this 30 millimeter Yaki synthetic brush here, and uh, this Yaki Ferrari brush right here, and uh, the Vikings Blade Dark Raven, which is a little shorter handled than the first two I've just showed you. DS Cosmetic makes a wonderful flat top synthetic brush. Uh, this is my AP Shaving. Uh, tuxedo Knot brush, this has been terrific, I like this a lot. This AMAC shaving brush, this has been terrific, I like this a lot. You can even get synthetic brushes uh, in these sizes right here. Uh, you know, for travel size, these do a wonderful job as well. But I do like my bore brushes as well. I have a couple of bore brushes. Two of my favorite are uh, the Samog uh, bore brushes, the Samog 1800 and the Samog Excelsior 830. Uh, these are terrific. This is a 75% tops bore hair, and this is 90% tops bore hair. Very soft, does a nice job exfoliating the hair. Really, really terrific, terrific brushes. I like them a lot. My point is that I feel that a synthetic brush, like this Ferrari brush or any of the others I've showed you, do a wonderful job in building a lather with a hard shaving soap. That's my point. I think they do a better job than a bore brush. Now, um, the bore brush does a nice job with shaving soap. I just feel, for me, that the synthetic brush is better. And I dare say if this Italian gentleman, this Italian barber, were to get a really nice synthetic brush with some nice soft tips and good backbone, he might say that it's better than a bore brush too. But, you know, traditions die hard, as they say. So, um, uh, I just happen to prefer a synthetic brush when it comes to using with hard shaving soaps. I like the bore brushes with shaving soaps, but I prefer to using them with shaving creams. I think they do a great job. And again, I really like the Samog uh, bore brushes. Speaking of shaving soap, uh, as you recall, Jim from Northfield made a gift of this beautiful, beautiful uh, Gillette Fat Boy vintage razor. I mean, I am absolutely loving this. But he also sent along a tin of TRA shaving soap. Now, I've not heard of the shaving soap. I'm trying to do a search on it, and I contacted uh, Jim, and he said he got it on eBay, and I did a search on eBay, and yeah, these are for sale on eBay. Now, I did use a brush to do a test lather in the palm of my hand with this, and the scent on this is absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and eBay is selling these for uh, six to seven dollars for two tins, and it's uh, 5.6 ounces. TRA, and the uh, TRA stands for Ted R. Andrzejczyk. I think is how it's pronounced. Andrzejczyk, I think. I, I'm not sure. If you know how it's pronounced, let me know. But um, yeah, terrific shaving soap so far. I haven't used it for an actual shave, but I have done a test lather. Lathers up beautifully, a lot of slickness. Seems like there's going to be a lot of glide there, too, just from in the palm of my hand there. Seemed wonderful. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying this and reviewing this uh, uh, coming up soon, as a matter of fact. So I just wanted to pass that on to you. But yes, I used a, um, a synthetic brush to uh, build that lather, and it whipped it up in no time flat. So that's all I'm saying. I'm just saying that I like synthetic brushes when it comes to hard soaps like this. And you can see that this is a really really, really good hard, hard soap here. It looks like it's a glycerin-based soap, but it's got a beautiful scent. It's got um, citrus, olive oil, red mirror alcohol, honey, and water. So those are the ingredients. So it seems like it's a really, really neat shaving soap. Looking forward to use that. Just wanted to pass that on to you uh, regarding uh, synthetic brushes, shave soaps. So yeah, uh, I don't disagree with you. Uh, if you prefer using a, um, a bore brush, hey, that's great. I just happen to think, for me, a synthetic brush and shave soaps, hard shave soaps, they seem to work better for me. But you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll start using a bore brush more often with a, uh, a hard shave soap and see how that develops if I develop a technique where it works a little more efficiently for me. So hey, thanks for the question. I really do appreciate it. Uh, okay, so Ron Cullinor, in another related brush question, wrote, 
Hi Mark, just sharing a tip. I recognize that my Yaki synthetic brush was not drying properly when using my towel to dry it. The bristles still looked clumped together no matter how many times I towel dried it. Then I thought maybe the brush needs cleaning. I used Pantene shampoo, two-in-one conditioner on the brush, just using my palm to make a lather with it. Once I rinsed it and began to towel dry it, the brush was practically dried and the brush was not clumped at the ends. It almost looked dried, so I guess that's a good indicator as to when your brush needs cleaning. Best, Ron. Well, you know, here's what I do with my synthetic brushes. Uh, regardless of the synthetic brush that I have. Yeah, I, uh, I like to just rinse it out and give it a really good rinsing and then a gentle, gentle squeeze right here just to kind of move some of that soap and excess cream out of there, just to move it out of there. And then <clears throat> I'm doing this kind of action with it underneath the faucet. Under, over the sink, and then I'll just give it a couple of vigorous shakes just to shake off the excess water. Now, when I look at it, if it's like this, if it's just, you know, all those, all those hairs are separated and they're just kind of flowing like that, then I know that I'm on the right path of having it dry, and it's probably about 90 to 95 percent dry just from that process. If they are clumped together, if they're clumped together sort of like, uh, like that, if they're clumped together. Well, you know, they're gonna be, it's gonna be clumped together. Uh, you'll, you'll see some of these hairs that are just connected together in just little clumps. Um, then I know that it needs more rinsing, that there's probably some soap that's still in there that's, that's sticking these hairs together. So I just do the rinse routine one more time and gently squeeze that soap out, just very, very gently. And then uh, again, rinse and then give it a couple of vigorous shakes. And it usually comes out looking like that. That's why I like synthetic brushes so much. They just clean up so quickly and so easily. Like them a lot. So yeah, that's, that's, um, that's kind of what I do in the way of cleaning a brush. Now, uh, Global Shave Clubs International has a shave brush miracle cleaner. That's what they're marketing. I have not used this yet, but the instructions, uh, you mix it with 50% uh, water, swirl the brush for two minutes, allow it to sit overnight, uh, rinse very well in hot water and dry. Uh, I would think that is for a brush that has some very, very stubborn, stubborn problems uh, that has to be cleaned, that hasn't been cleaned in a long time. But you might want to check this out. Uh, I think there is a, um, a variation to that, those instructions. You can, you can do that for brushes that are not, that don't need as deep a cleaning. Um, and it looks like it's a very, very good product. So I just want to pass that on to you. Shave Brush Miracle from Global Shave Clubs International. So I just want to pass that on. All right, which leads us to the next question from Robert Spritzer. Robert, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Spritzer, S-P-R-E-I-T-Z-E-R. -E -E Spritzer, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, he writes, good afternoon, Mark. I'm a subscriber to your channel. I'm Spence1000. Yeah, see you up there all the time. And I thought for your Monday mailbag that I would ask you your thoughts and experience, if any, with the use of shims to change the aggression on a razor. Some razors are so mild that I wish I could find some way to dial it up a bit for a non-adjustable razor, such as the Feather ASD2. I would be interested as well from any of the viewers, their thoughts and suggestions. Thanks. Well, I will throw that out there to the viewers. How do you shim a razor? What do you use? Those kinds of things. I don't shim razors, but if you're new to shimming, I can explain it to you very, very briefly. But I'll also link to a video by Douglas Smythe who is the owner operator of Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, PAA, where he sells a lot of different wet shaving products. And he also has a wonderful video on how to shim a razor. And he, can, and he does a far better job in it than I could do, which is why I'm linking to his video. I've also purchased one of his razors, which very, very good razor. Uh, so this razor blade right here, if this, was, if this were a used razor blade, all you, all, shimming a razor, all you would be doing is just trimming off this side and this side, right along this edge here, and getting rid of that cutting edge. And then you would use that and put this on the base plate of your razor and then put your razor blade that you'll be shaving with on top of this 
and then reassemble your, your razor. And then that extra layer will then open up the blade gap a little bit. So if you have something like this um, HD34C, which is rather mild, what you would do is you would put your shim here on the base plate and you would put your blade here on um, the cap or put your blade in the cap put your shim on top of that, and then that shim would be the first thing that the base plate is on. And then because the shim is narrower, you've trimmed the edges, it's narrower, the only edge that is exposed is the razor blade edge. And because it's stacked, it's a little thicker, it's gonna open up this blade gap here. It's gonna open up this blade gap here so you get a more aggressive shave. That's how it works. And um, I don't mess with that kind of thing, I just like I like razors that are neutral to the mild side. Uh, razors that are a little more aggressive, really not my cup of tea. I've used them, uh, I think they're fine, they're very good, something I can't use every single day, but I'll use them every once in a while. So I have no need to make a mild razor more aggressive because I prefer mild razor blades. I prefer mild razors. Uh, but that brings me to another product that Global Shave Club International has Aggresso, and he sent along, Sheldon sent along a little bit, a little information here. What is Aggresso? How does it make almost every razor you own adjustable? Aggresso has four one quarter inch strips. Each strip is made of high tech vinyl. Each strip is waterproof. Each strip adds four milliliters of blade gap well, he's got four ML, maybe he means millimeters, of blade gap when applied to the base plate of your razor. Aggresso strips can be stacked to increase the blade gap even more, and of course can be cut into one eighth inch, one eighth inch widths. Okay, so that's what this is. So if you open this up here, uh, that's what he's got. He's got, um, let's get this open. Ah, there it is, okay. So that's what this is. It's just, it's, it's these little, I don't know if you can see that. See these little, these are little strips that you can, you can peel these off and you can stick these on the base, there it is. You can take this off here, peel this off and then apply that to your, the base plate of your razor, say right here, apply it to the, base plate of your razor, and then when you load your razor blade, uh, it lifts the razor blade up a little bit and increases the gap of, of the razor head. So that's kind of neat, and the fact that it's waterproof uh, tells me that you can use it uh, several times and also stack it to increase the, the blade gap if you, if you want to. But that's, um, that's what that is. Aggresso, and that seems like a really kind of neat product. Uh, if you don't want to uh, trim your own uh, razor blade, your own, your, own, your own old razor blades, you don't want to mess around with that, this might be a, a very good option. Um, but again, uh, shimming is something that I don't, I've, I don't do because again, I like mild razors. Okay, that's it. Thanks very, very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Do you shim your razors? Uh, do you like board? Do you like uh, synthetic? Really like to know? Comment below. Check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comic strip George, other cartoons, other videos like this. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark's Radio where you'll find all the products I review on this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.